In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. You know, I remember several years ago flipping on the television and seeing a show where they had uh, these monstrous men, um, and I mean monstrous is very muscular, and some of them just these enormous sizes, lifting tires and putting these giant uh, concrete or marble balls up on top of pillars and, and pulling a train uh, with a, a rope or a semi or rolling over uh, these big caterpillar tires. And I remember looking at it and I'm like, how do you train for that? What do you do in order to say, you know what, I think I can, I, I can flip over a car now. Or I, I, think I, can, uh, I think I can pull a train down the tracks. I mean, what do you do to train for that? And then, you know, as I was thinking, I, I remember many years ago, too, um, in, in music class, watching um, some people who were starting out to play an instrument, and they would play, and they would get so exhausted. They, like, the, the guitar especially, you'd see them, and then they'd say, oh, my hands burn, and they would shake their wrists, and they'd say, it just hurts. It just hurts to do this, this exercise. And you take those two parts, you take the extreme labor of moving these things that no one really in your lifetime, you would never sit there and say, you know what, I think I'm going to pick up a 500 pound marble ball and put it on a pole. Um, but many of the other things we do in life require some type of training and we have to really know how to train for these things. In a musical instrument, it's not how strong you are, it's how sometimes how relaxed you are and how much technique you have. And the same thing if we look at extreme exercise, it's not always how strong a person is, but it's about how smart they are in what they do and, most importantly, their endurance. And if you look at the word endurance in the Bible, you'll find it almost written, uh, written almost a hundred times. Uh, and half of those times come from, a little over half, come from the book of Psalms, the, the collection of the, 50, uh, the Psalms that we have, the 50th Psalm which we hear, the 23rd Psalm which we hear, uh, although I walk in the, the, the valley of the shadow of death. We, we know these, these Psalms and we hear them especially during the Lenten season. But we think about endurance and we come to this point in, in our, holy, uh, our holy and great fast where we're at the point now where we're getting weary. And I see some of you shaking your heads going, yeah, it's getting long. It's a long Lent and uh, it's getting difficult and now is the time. Are we in China? <laughs> is that a Chinese thing? <laughs> wow, it's so serene. If that's your wake-up alarm, I'd go back to sleep. Um, I think I'm going to have to just come up here in the beginning and say, can you please mute your cell phones or whatever. But I don't know what, what the things are. Anyways, uh, let's get back to what, what we're back to. What was I saying? Um, you know, Elder, or Elder, um, Metropolitan, I mean, this is a total side note now that I'm derailed. Um, Metropolitan Kalistos Ware once told a story where he was standing in front and he says, you know, uh, I lecture all over the world and I talk to different people and, and uh, I realized one time that I had to, to, to lecture standing up because as I was lecturing, I fell asleep. And he said, the worst part was as I was uh, lecturing, I heard this voice droning on in the background. And now Metropolitan uh, Kalistos, uh, where it's old Timothy Ware, he became Metropolitan, has this this beautiful British accent that you hear him and you just, you just kind of eat up his words as he's speaking. He's, he says, I heard this voice droning on and on and I realized it was my own. <laughs> so, um, and, I, and, and then he adds, and I didn't know what I was saying, which is, brings me to the, the Chinese alarm. Um, so we get to the point of endurance. So we're in the middle of our fast and we're, we're weary, we're we are um, tired, we're not seeing the results we wanna see, we feel uh, kinda crushed, just exhausted, we're sick of carb loading, um, you know, all these different things that, that I hear from you and that you know, we all feel. Um, 
but really it comes to the point of endurance. And we hear that word endurance, endurance, endurance all throughout the Bible. St. Paul says, by your endurance, you will gain your lives. Then we hear in the um, Compline service as we kneel, uh, right before we kneel for the prayer of Manasseh, it says, they, we will all grow old like a garment and be folded and put away, but the Lord endures forever. So we look at this endurance and we say it lasts forever and something we're called to have. But the key to what I'm, what I'm saying, why did I bring up these uh, extreme sports and why did I bring up the musical instruments is because sometimes we get to the point where we're worn down and we don't know how to properly move forward. We don't have the tools to work smart and to work wise in our, in our Lenten journey. You know, sometimes when you see with kids, especially, when they're hungry, right? And you miss that meal. You've probably done it, uh, or maybe you've even done it for yourself, and you get there, and you're like, okay, it's time to eat. And then you come home, and your kids are like, what do we got to eat, right? And maybe you're even that way, and you slide open the pantry, and what's in there, right? Uh, candy, uh, granola bars, chips, or whatever, and what do you do? And I know you do this, because I do it sometimes too, right? You open it up, you grab whatever's not glued down, and you just start shoving it in your mouth at the end of the day, and then you realize, oh, I shouldn't have had the popcorn with the peanut butter and the potato chips and, and the, that granola bar. I don't know when that was from. And, um, and the jelly was old or whatever. And you just start putting all these things and you make poor choices because you're tired and you're famished. The same thing happens in our Lenten journey. We're tired. We're hungry. We're weak. We're tempted. The things that we think we're trying to overcome become difficult for us, and we say, oh, I'm not getting to where I want to be. This Lent is not working. This fast is not working. And what I tell you today is when you get to that point when you start saying, this isn't working, is exactly when it's working. When you feel that you're worn down and you're saying, oh, I can't do anymore. This is too hard. Then that is the time where you are at the bottom, right? You're, you're broken at that point. Now it's either what are you going to do? You're either going to fall back in your ways or you're going to find a way to move forward and endure the fast, endure your temptations, and to move forward so that you can become closer to God. That's what Lent is. It's about wearing us down. When did the devil come to Christ to tempt him in the desert? Was when he was worn down. After, wait, you know, at the beginning, it's really easy. You could say, well, you know, I'm joking about not having any meat or whatever. Or I, I look at me, I'm, I'm not eating. I, I drove right past the McDonald's and I didn't even think twice about a, you know, a Big Mac with cheese or whatever. It doesn't bother us at the beginning, right? Our sins don't bother us right when it's freshly put away. But later, as we get tired, as we get worn down, then what happens? We're creatures of habit. And, you know, the, uh, the, the book of Genesis says, you know, uh, when God says man is inclined to do bad things from his youth, which means we kind of return, even from our childhood, we go back to the childhood ways. But St. Paul says, when I was a child, I thought like a child. Now that I'm grown, I think like an adult, and I do things like an adult. But what are we called to do? What's the, what's the, what's the key here? The key is when we're worn down, we have to make smart choices, very smart choices. Most people die in a desert because they save their water. They don't drink it. They don't drink it when they need it. They say, well, I'm going to save it, I'm going to save it, I'm going to save it, I'm going to save it. And then they, they die with water on them in a container. If we look at our lives, we have the water freely available to us in the church. We have the, the hymns of the church. We have the, the services of the church. We have these checkpoints. We have Sunday to come and refuel. We have Wednesday to come and refuel. We have Monday night to come and complain and to ask God for help for all the problems we have. We have Friday night to ask for the Virgin Mary's intercessions and to praise her for her great gift to us as a mother and the gift of the Christ coming through her. We have these. We have these gifts, but now we're worn down. We're tired, and we have to be smart about how we move forward. So don't give up. That's what I'm telling you. If you feel worn down and you say, oh, you know what, I'm just tired. I'm 
this is not working. I'm not getting anywhere. My, my kids aren't getting where I'm not, I'm not getting anywhere. It's, it's all, it's futile. What that is, it's the little whisperings in the ear, like the devil did to Christ. Oh, see that rock over there? You could, we can make that bread for you, and then you could fill your stomach, and you would be all set. And see that city down there? I, that's all yours if you want. And you know, when you're tired, most, most stupid things that we do in our lives are when we're tired, right? Look at college, right? Look at uh, high school when you're tired. Look at the things that come out of your mouth when you're tired, right? And somebody says, oh, they, oh I, was, I was unthinking, I was exhausted, and I said blah, blah, blah to this person, or I did this thing, and I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Or maybe it, we're embarrassed. Because we're tired, we're worn down, everything gets worn down. We get chiseled down to the, the bare skin, and everything becomes hypersensitive. And we respond, we get angry. If you're one of those people, when you get tired, you get angry. Or maybe you're one of those people, you get tired, you get hungry. Maybe one of those tired people, when you get tired, you just, you just give up on everything. Oh, forget it. And just pff, flat down on the ground or whatever. I don't know. We all have different ways that we react to when we get worn down. But the key is, just like those monstrous men were trying to lift things, and there's really no training for that. And then you have the person who has to work smart to be efficient in their movement. And even efficient in, you look at... Um, uh, bicycle riders, professional bicycle riders, and you see their knees and they're perfectly straight because they're cutting down on the wind and they're, they're leaning forward. I can't ride a bike like that. My knees are wobbling all over the place and, and I, I don't feel efficient at all. And, and, but if you're going to be aerodynamic, you have to be aerodynamic. And if you're going to move ahead in this Lent, we have the tools, we have the knowledge to move forward straight and to be strong, but what are those things? And those things, again, are the services and to realize that your struggle now, your oppression that you feel, the tiredness, the, the frustration that I'm not where I want to be, is exactly what is supposed to be happening. And if it's not happening, we're not doing something right. And it sounds paradoxical, but the, the Orthodox Church has a lot of paradoxes in it, right? Lose your life and you'll save it. Save your life and you lose it. Those are paradoxes. The same thing here. When you struggle is when you're growing. It makes no sense. And St. John Chrysostom says specifically, if we have a life and everything is perfect, and we have, we have wealth, we have people tending to us, we have uh, no problems, we can just throw money at problems, and we can tell people to do things and they'll do it for us, and everything is perfectly laid out, then we have to be very careful because something is missing. And that's something is, that's missing is what is happening in our souls, what's happening in our hearts. And I'm not saying that if, you, if things are going well in your life right now, that's a bad thing. But we also have to balance and temper those things and say, what are we doing that's for our salvation and what is happening in our life? And are the two compatible? Because some lives are not compatible with the spiritual life. So, endurance. By your lives, by your endurance, you will gain your lives, as St. Paul says. So as you go through, this is the halfway point just about in Lent, and we have the, the procession of the cross with the flowers and these jonquil flowers today. But the key is we have to grow like these flowers in difficult places. You see jonquil flowers, they grow on the side of the road. There's, no, there's nobody over there watering them. There's nobody weeding. And then you see these beautiful flowers come up, and they're strong. We're the same way. We're in places where we're not supposed to grow, right? We're not supposed to grow in our workplace. We're not supposed to grow in society. We're supposed to let push Christianity out. We're supposed to push, push our morals out. We're not supposed to stand up and say, I'm a Christian, or we work with people who are doing awful things, or we're neighbors with people who are doing awful things. And we're in places where it's very difficult to grow. But the things that grow in difficult areas are the things that become extraordinary. If you've ever looked in the bottom of the ocean, not that you could get there, but if you've ever seen a show of what lies down deep, deep, deep in the ocean, where the pressure would absolutely smash you into smithereens, where even submarines have to be um, tempered and cameras have to be tempered to go down that low to see what's going on. 
and you go down there and it's pitch black. The sun's rays don't even penetrate the depth of the water. It's pitch black. And then you see something extraordinary. You see these little fish that are glowing. They're glowing and they're swimming through the water. And the pitch black, nothing else. And why are they glowing? So they can find each other. So they can find each other so that they can grow and flourish and, and, and continue to, to live in that oppressive, dark, smashing atmosphere. They find that light on, that God has given them in order to, uh, to continue to breed and to grow in that, in that scenario. God has given us a light too, and it resides in our souls. And we receive that light at, at our chrismation, at our baptism or chrismation, and it continues to grow. But it's going to grow extraordinary in awful scenarios. In awful scenarios. Look at the saints, look at the martyrs. When did they become the, the martyrs? When did they become holy and, and re revered by the church? And when did their relics start to stream myrrh or become miraculous? It was after they were, they were flayed, their body, their skin was cut off, or they were um, tortured, or they were put on a wheel, or they were beaten, or they were dragged behind horses, and ultimately most of them were beheaded. And then what happens? They become this, this awesome source of miracles. And the 40 martyrs that were tortured and put in the water that we have their icon right over there on the bottom row. We have the relics in the altar table. And we also have some of the relics in a, in a little um, container as well. When did they become sources of, of miracles? And the ability to become that which chrismates and, and sanctifies and consecrates a church is when they receive this awful, oppressive life and when they ultimately gave their life up. So as you're moving forward, if you're smashed, that's a good thing. But don't give up. And it's a good thing because now you're at the point where you can grow. And you can move forward with the tools of the church. We don't need complex uh, regiments of how to move forward. We don't need uh, even the economy of motion. We just need to understand that we have to continue to love God and to continue to chase after him and to follow him and he will strengthen us so that our endurance will strengthen us and as a, any good runner or any good athlete knows it's all about the endurance and as as any good christian knows and as saint paul reminds us by our endurance we will gain our lives amen